You are lying to yourself about what it takes to be a successful documentary filmmaker. And in this video, I'm gonna share five of the biggest lies that you're telling yourself. Then I'll get into how you can avoid being influenced by them. And because these lies come from personal experience, believing them myself at one point, at the end, I will list off some of the key truths that I've learned over the past 10 years of working as a documentary filmmaker. Hopefully that will help some of you out there escape the negative self-talk and focus on what really matters. Let's do this. Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Austin Meyer. I'm a freelance documentary filmmaker, National Geographic Explorer, and I've worked on productions for Hulu, HBO, The New York Times, and more. On this channel, I share the field-tested skills, mindsets, and lessons that have helped me on my journey as a documentary filmmaker. When it comes to designing a life as a documentary filmmaker, there isn't some smooth path towards career success. Instead, the career path is full of ambiguity, risk-taking, doubt, and uncertainty. Instead of looking and feeling like this, being a documentary filmmaker usually looks and feels more like this. And to create order amongst the chaos, our brain creates stories about what it takes to get to where we want to be. And the problem with these stories is that they are usually constructed based on false information that we absorb from marketing campaigns, paid influencers, and social media posts from peers or role models who aren't fully transparent. And that is how the stories we tell ourselves become lies. Lies that make us feel like imposters, holding us back from realizing our creative potential. The first lie that you are telling yourself is that you need expensive camera equipment and a huge camera rig to create high quality films. This lie is so corrosive. Now, don't get me wrong, cameras and how you build them out to fit your needs and personal preferences do matter to an extent, but it matters so much less than most filmmakers believe. I've been there myself, and I also talk to people all the time who think that they just don't have the right camera or rig. We think, ah, if I could only just get that new camera, that new fancy cinema lens, then I will be able to make the films I aspire to make. This fixation on needing to have the newest, the most expensive, and the most impressive camera equipment is really a mask for insecurity. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in your ability to create the art that will live up to your own expectations. And even more corrosive, you don't believe in your ability to create art that will live up to the expectations of others. You're scared of what other people are going to think. You're scared of other people's subjective opinions that something you make is not going to be good or look good. So you sit around and convince yourself that you just need that one next piece of equipment to finally make your project a reality. And that way, you never have to face the resistance of art. You never have to face the gap between where your skills are right now and where you wish they were. You never have to face the opinions of others. If you're watching this video right now, I'm guessing that this is not the first time that you've heard that whatever camera you have right now is good enough. But my hope is that this video will get one person to actually believe that. It will get one person to stop watching this video and all the other filmmaking videos on YouTube about 8K cameras and dynamic range and say, I'm gonna go out and make my film with whatever I've got. And if you need inspiration, look no further than the 2024 Oscar nominations for Best Feature Length Documentary. One nominee titled 20 Days in Mariupol, which also won the Audience Award at the 2023 Sundance Film Festival, was shot on a Sony A7S III with the 24 to 240 f 3.5 to 6.3 lens. And that's a camera you can get used for $2,500 and a lens you can get used in the $500 to $600 range. That's a $3,000 camera package that just got nominated for the Oscar. And that's not an anomaly. Another Oscar nominee for best documentary titled Bobby Wine, The People's President, was also shot on the A7S III with a 24 to 105 Sony kit lens. The Oscar shortlisted Beyond Utopia was shot primarily on a cell phone with occasional shots on the Sony A7S. So stop telling yourself this lie that you need the next piece of gear. Cause while you're worrying about image stabilization, other filmmakers are out there making Oscar contenders on equipment that is likely much less than what you have. So whether you need to write it on a post-it note or say it out loud as a mantra, here's the truth. You already have everything you need to be successful. And that leads me to the second lie you are telling yourself, which is that you need permission to start. I think that a lot of us get into filmmaking because it's fun. I know for me, my earliest skills with the camera are just from messing around with my friends in middle school and high school making goofy music videos and skits. We didn't wait to be told what we could make. We didn't wait for an assignment. We just got an idea in our heads that excited us and we made it. But then at some point we tend to lose that energy and so instead of going out and making, we spend all of our time trying to get hired on a project 
we're excited about. Or spend all our time applying for grants or pitching story ideas to an outlet, we hope will give us the green light. All of those business development steps are important, but especially when you are early in your career, those can't come at the expense of you actually making films. When you're just getting started, you are bad. I mean, I'm 10 years into this and I know Austin two years from now will look back on what I'm making today and cringe. And the only way that we can get good or get to the level where streaming platforms, clients, grants, or editorial outlets are willing to take on the risk of investing in us is by building our skills and building a portfolio of work that demonstrates clearly what we are capable of. So don't wait for permission. Do what you gotta do to start making the kinds of films that you one day wanna get paid to make. For me, when I was moving from being a video journalist into longer form documentary work, I lived with my parents. I tried keeping my living expenses as low as possible and I would go out and make shorts a five minute piece, 10 minute piece on all sorts of themes. It was a chance for me to develop my skills and portfolio pieces. So whenever a grant came along like the IDEO Climate Storytelling Fellowship or the National Geographic Explorer Grant or the Missouri Photo Workshop or the Jackson Wild Media Lab, I could find something in my portfolio of tons of shorts that fit the application. I could say, hey, I do this stuff. They didn't need to know that no one paid me to make it. All they see is my skills and that I've done it before. So early in your career, yes, do the pitching, but not at the expense of making your own projects. That work will give you the clarity to know whether this career trajectory is really for you and also build the foundation for your skills and portfolio. The third lie that you're telling yourself is one that took me a while to weed out of my own mind. And that lie is that you should only be working on documentaries and not commercial work. When I was getting started as a documentary filmmaker, I thought that being a successful documentarian meant that you only worked on meaningful and significant documentaries. I remember feeling like, a failure or a sellout when I took a job filming a video for some random catering or tech company. And I think I felt this way because documentarians hardly ever talk about doing those projects. Filmmakers create this facade that every project they work on is some soul-fulfilling, immersive calling of a documentary. But then, as I got to know more of the industry, I learned that even the filmmakers who are working at the highest levels of the craft have a commercial arm of their business. For example, Breakwater Studios is the leader in short docs. Oscar winners and nominations, New York Times publications have been coming to them with ease. But head on over to the Work With Us tab on their website and you can see they do ads for Schwab and Unity. Or let's look at award-winning directors, Jimmy Chin and Chai Vassarelli of Free Solo. Look at Jimmy's social media and it's pretty much all documentary work. But head on over to their director's page on Sept Studios and you can see they're doing ads for Chase Bank, for Bose, for Squarespace. Unless you're coming from a trust fund, almost all documentarians supplement their income and fund passion projects through doing commercial work. So instead of feeling shame about filming that wedding or networking event, view it as an opportunity to work on your skills and fund your next project so that you don't need a grant maker's permission to get started. The fourth lie that you're telling yourself about filmmaking is that you need to travel to get to amazing stories. Or the other side of that coin, that there are no amazing stories where you live. I think it's really easy to get caught up thinking that we need to travel to far off lands to find unique stories. Now, for all of us who have had the privilege of traveling to different countries, it does feel true. It feels like there are so many stories out there beyond our own county or country borders. But actually, this exposure to great stories is a consequence of the person we become or choose to be when we travel. And we can become this person at home. For example, when we travel, we talk to strangers. We accept that we'll be uncomfortable a lot of the time. We throw down our guard. We drop our ego and are more vulnerable. We ask questions about why things are the way we are. We open our hearts and our minds to people, places, and the culture. And that way of being in the world invites stories into our awareness. So it's not that the location creates stories, but rather our approach, our way of being, and our heightened awareness. And you can be that way at home. It may take a little bit more intentional effort to start seeing the familiar as unique, but it's possible. There are endless stories all around you. You'll find them when you become a traveler in your own hometown. And the last lie that you're telling yourself about filmmaking is that everyone else has it figured out. It's so easy to see other filmmaker successes and feel like we don't and could not ever measure up. Social media perpetuates this, YouTube perpetuates this, I probably perpetuate this, even though I'm trying my best to be real and transparent here. So this is a simple reminder to not buy into the illusion that everyone has it figured out. 
we're all on our own individual journeys, taking it one day at a time, just trying to learn more about the craft and more about ourselves. And the not so secret beauty of art is that we never figure it out. So if you're feeling this way, know that you're right where you should be. So what are some of the key truths to filmmaking that I've learned over the past 10 years of freelance work? Well, here they are. One, you already have everything you need to be successful. Two, you don't need permission to start your film. People think they need perfect conditions to start when in reality, starting is the perfect condition. Three, commercial and documentary projects can have a symbiotic relationship if you welcome it. Four, travel where you live. Or in the words of Rick Rubin from his book, The Creative Act, as artists, we aim to live in a way in which we see the extraordinary hidden in the seemingly mundane. Then challenge ourselves to share what we see in a way that allows others a glimpse of this remarkable beauty. And five, when you're not sure what you're doing, you're exactly where you need to be because that means you're growing. And with that, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider jumping into the comments. Did anything resonate with you from this video? How are you confronting the fictions that our minds create? I appreciate you and we'll see you next week. Until then, go out and tell some stories.